Sanjay Patel, a pop artist and an animator for Pixar Films, has worked on films such as Ratatouille, The Incredibles, and Toy Story 3. Patel also has a unique personal portfolio, drawing on his Indian heritage to illustrate adaptations of ancient Hindu epics. Here's his story. We're working on a uh, series of shorts based on Mater's character called Cars Tunes. And uh, in this particular short, they actually are uh, big monster trucks and they end up sort of in this big wrestling match. Pixar Studios in Emeryville is known for bringing innovation and emotion to the world of computer animated films. Popular films like Toy Story, Finding Nemo, The Incredibles, and Ratatouille have garnered the studio 22 Academy Awards. Now a lead animator at Pixar, Sanjay Patel was still a student when he was recruited by the fledgling company almost 14 years ago. He was studying in the animation program at CalArts in Los Angeles. That program was started by Walt Disney himself to train his animators, and so I started making 2D animations. Toy Story had been released, and they had brought it to CalArts, and as students we saw it, and I was just blown away with the sophistication of it and the sophistication of the storytelling. And so I put down my pencil and no longer draw at Pixar. I have to use my mouse and I use 3D animation software. Essentially, we have this car that's been built by uh, the modelers and these models are very elaborate uh, puppets and uh, we have controls to uh, move the puppet around and create different positions and different expressions. I could just sort of move this control and he could move his tire and hit McQueen. Move the upper lip up down even uh, their eyelids. When I picked up the scene, I actually had them looking a little bit sort of too angry. And the director actually pulled me back and he was thinking that, you know what, these characters are best friends and they're actually, actually having fun just playing tag. I ended up having to ch sort of change the expression to reflect that. And that's the end of what I do in terms of animation. And then it gets handed off to lighting and rendering. And here's how the scene looks with shadows and colors. Pixar is incredibly supportive of people doing outside work. Uh, there's all kinds of classes that people could take here at Pixar. There's painting classes, there's drawing classes, there's sculpture classes. And I think they really encourage that, you know, you really need to renew yourself as an artist to be able to come back and sort of work under such pressure and intensity on these films. If there's anything that Pixar espouses, it's just this absolute, like, church of storytelling. It really does force you to think in a very different way. I think because of that, I've been able to pursue my own stories that I want to tell. Since 2006, Patel has published his own work, lavishly illustrated interpretations of ancient Hindu mythology. His latest book is called Ramayana, Divine Loophole. The Ramayana is one of the foundational myths of Hinduism and tells the epic story of Rama, his brother Lakshman, and his wife Sita. The Ramayana is such a neat story because it's all adventure, plot, and actions, and there's magic, there's fighting, and animals, and gods, and demons that I just thought, like, I really want to tell this story in the most modern and graphic way as possible. As Patel undertook the task of bringing to life dozens of scenes from this ancient story, he found himself using the skills he gained from his animation work at Pixar. Animating at Pixar makes me think about, well, What's the acting and what's the sort of narrative arc that I could use for this little panel that I'm trying to draw? And it really reminds me that character moments are so important in this great mythology that I want to tell. And so I do feel like the two feed off of each other. This type of artwork would definitely be hanging around in my parents' household. And this is definitely my indoctrination and like introduction to Hinduism. I'd see stuff like this and I'd just have like, like no effing clue what, what this meant. I was raised in Southern California. My parents owned a motel in uh, San Bernardino, California. And my parents are from India. They're from a state called Gujarat. I could speak English really well, so I had to stay home and help run the motel. I would just kind of became a TV brat. And I really, in many ways, I just grew up on Amer American culture was definitely like fed to me through the, te the television, mainly through cartoons. I don't know, I could really just sort of escape my reality and I just got, became obsessed with watching cartoons, drawing cartoons, collecting comic books. I would sit there and draw for hours and hours and hours from these comics. Although Patel revered the comic book heroes of American popular culture, 
his relationship with the icons of his parents' Hindu faith was more complicated. Indian culture in my, like, I don't know, like growing up, I hated it. I hated it, hated it. And my parents were raising me in a sort of bubble of their own culture inside uh, Southern California. <laughs> I wasn't exposed to the stories of the Hindu mythology or Hindu faith at all. What I was exposed to was the iconography and the imagery. But it's his perspective as an outsider that allows Patel to reclaim the iconography of his parents' culture and reimagine it for a contemporary audience. Patel is in the midst of creating a new book based on the story of the Hindu deity Ganesha. In Patel's version of the tale, he plays off of the elephant god Ganesha's famous love of sweets. It's kind of a fun little moment, actually. This is after Ganesha uh, he actually tries biting down on the jumbo jawbreaker Ladu. And sure enough, he, uh, he breaks his tusk. And I'm trying to figure out what would be the most fun way to like, figure out how, to Gan how Ganesh might re react, like, oh, no. So I was thinking maybe he'd be crying over here. <laughs> Growing up, I always felt disconnected from uh, my American friends simply because like, I was Indian, my skin was brown. And, uh, from my Indian friends, I felt disconnected in different ways because I was an artist. And so I was just felt outside in all these ways. And finally, I found the thing that actually brought everything that I liked together. What I'd like to think is actually I found my voice. And this voice is something that feels really relevant to me, and really important and really good. I just know so clearly that I'm going to be doing this till I, the day I die. To find out more about Sanjay Patel, visit the Detroit Performs website. And that wraps it up for this edition of Detroit Performs. As always, for more arts and culture, head to DetroitPerforms.org, where you'll find featured videos, blogs, and information on upcoming arts events. Also, check us out on Facebook and Twitter. We'd like to thank the 4731 Gallery for letting us come by here today and explore the galleries and the murals. Until next Tuesday, get out there and show the world how Detroit performs, y'all. I am DJ Oliver. Thanks for watching, guys.